What is happening guys? Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's doing well. Today I got what I hope is a very cool video for you. One that I hope will help some of you guys out. Some of you that have asked questions regarding my haircut and my color and how I do everything, how I get everything done. And that's what we're talking about today. Here on the channel I have shown several times how I get my haircut with my stylist Jenny. I've done my best to answer questions on those videos and show you guys as best I can how everything is done for me. But today I'm going to take that a full step further. Today we're going to talk about my most recent cut and color with my stylist Jenny actually narrating every step as she does it. We're going to hear directly from her how she covers my grays, gives me highlights, the way she cuts my hair, what she uses, the measurements, everything that I can show you about my haircut without actually having you guys in the salon with me is going to be in this video. This is of course going to to make this video a very long one so I'm just gonna warn you guys right up front here this is gonna be a little bit longer than usual but I'm gonna jump right into it I'm gonna cut the chit chat for that very reason we're just gonna send it right on over to Jenny at the salon we're gonna get started with this I really hope you guys enjoy it here we go So I, we're going to start with the base color. I actually budged the formula just a tiny bit lighter because we went pretty, pretty dark last time. And it's really more about, it's, it's not really going to be visible so much to the eye, but as I know, like here in a couple times, we're going to want to go a little bit lighter at the base. So I'm just kind of starting to budget now. So I did um, like 80, 20, level three. 80, you know, like 80% of the formula is level three, 20% level four. So it's just gonna be like a small percentage of a level lighter. Level one being black and level 10 being like the lightest blonde. Level three is about, you know, two levels away from being black. All right, so now we are going to throw some highlights in and we're kind of just gonna do that in between you know we put so much work into getting all of this lighter on the ends but as it's starting to grow out now we have like you know two and a half inches or so of dark to light and so we don't we're gonna throw highlights into just kind of this area to um, just break it apart and make those make that lightness last a little bit longer especially in with what we're doing with your hair um, I'm gonna do them pretty close together, you know, maybe like quarter inch subsections. That's kind of the distance of the parting that I'm taking. Um, in the front, I'll keep it pretty close and then kind of slowly start to move them a little bit further apart as it goes back. I feel like the blend that way towards the back is works better. Now that I put in the last foil, I'm just gonna kind of peek up at the front and see how fast or not this is processing. And we're going to use a little heat. Okay, so this just helps the uh, lightener process faster. Uh, and infrared heat works a little bit better than just direct heat like from a dryer. So I'm gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes and then come back and check on it and see how it goes. A few moments later. So we let it process for about 30 minutes under heat and we are gonna pull it out and rinse and tone. So what kind of the method to rinsing base color is wet it a little bit and then you have to emulsify the color, especially around the hairline because the only thing that really removes that color is the color. Color removes color. It's like one of the things you learn in hair school. And you can see with the, it's all just coming right off with the water now. 
And we have to shampoo and condition uh, to stop the action of the lightener. The after color shampoo that I use is specifically formulated to stop that action of the lightener. Otherwise, the lightener can potentially kind of keep working after you shampoo it. And then my conditioner, uh, the after color conditioner is formulated also to, you know, kind of stop that action, but also um, shut down the cuticle. And then we're gonna towel dry. And I actually mixed up two different levels of toner. Uh, I mixed like a six ash along with a level seven neutral to tone kind of the base. Um, and some of that didn't get quite as light as the end, which is fine. Um, and then I just did a straight neutral level eight for the ends. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so it's been uh, like 10 minutes. We've had this on, it's time to rinse it off. Usually when I rinse out the toner, I really like to just condition it and not shampoo it. We already shampooed it, you know, before we toned it, so I don't want to unnecessarily rinse out that toner. I'll just kind of towel dry and get to the haircut. I usually take it up a little bit shorter on this side. Uh, your hair just grows more on this side. This side just always doesn't behave itself as well as this side. So we do usually take this side up a little bit shorter. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start right with my one blade. My clippers are the Oster Primos, which are basically the same thing as the Titans. Um, they're just not giant because I have tiny hands and I can hardly hold the Titans. <laughs> if I were cutting his hair for the first time, even if I were gonna go with a one blade, I'd probably start with a 1A just for the blending area, but I know that, um, I know his head and I know I can blend it without that, so. I usually start kind of gingerly in this um, sideburn area because I don't want it to be super cut off between the sideburns and the haircut. And I do a little bit, you know, we've got this little bit of a recess here, so I will kind of go into that a tad so we don't have a huge shadow there where the hair is. So then to blend, I usually go ahead and switch to my triple aught, which is triple zero. And I'm just gonna kind of clip her over, comb, blend it. I do kind of, like on this side, I'll round it off a little bit at the top. You know, we always, sometimes we differentiate. Sometimes we leave that really long and it lays down. Sometimes, you know, it, that feels a little bit too heavy on the top, so we'll kind of take off that top corner. Well, and sometimes it's about, you know, you do it one way and you see how it grows out and you adjust accordingly. Like, oh, nope, that wasn't, <laughs> that was not successful. And I think today I am sometimes, so if I feel like I'm looking forward, the blend isn't quite on, which it's not. We've got a little bit of a bump here. I'm gonna go in back with my one and maybe my one A and kind of get at that blend. That's kind of one of those things that's hard to see when you're looking straight at it. You really need the mirror to see it. So this is my one A. And so this time around, instead of kind of being up this way, I am going really straight up and you can kind of see when I'm bumping off of where this is. So next, I do, this is kind of one of those things that some hairdressers do, but most barbers do not. I do like to, in that blend area, use my texture shears a little bit. If I saw some, I guess, big, uh, if, I f if I felt like I needed to go in with my actual shears, I would. Um, but I do as much as I can with my clippers. I don't, uh, the theory with barbers is that if you go in with your texture shears, that the hairs will actually like make each other stick up further, which is why barbers don't use them. Uh, I don't think that this is true, especially if you're not going very far into the hair. If I were going with my texture shears like right close to the scalp, then yeah, that would make them stick up. Um, but like with your hair, you have pretty thick, pretty straight 
growing out hair and I feel like as it grows out, just kind of adding a little bit of texture into those ends, taking some of that weight out actually helps it lay down a little bit better. Okay, so I just kind of clean up the edges of his hairline here, get any of those stray hairs that are kind of out of the way his hairline naturally grows. I also know that his sideburns are, everybody's uneven in some way or another. So his sideburns on one side are narrower than on the other side. So I usually kind of try to bridge that gap a little bit and take in the sides that are wider. And if I feel like there's any hairs on the, you know, ear side of the sideburns that are a little too long, I'll take those down a little bit. And usually I just kind of taper the edgers around the ear to kind of taper that into the skin. And also the same in the back. Kind of clean up those edges and fade that into the skin. And then we'll go ahead around the front of the hairline. I mean, it's like a lineup, you know? I'm essentially like all those little places where the baby hairs or the hairline is a little bit, um, I guess not straight as it comes out. You know, we're lining it up a little bit, but we're not taking it so far back. I mean, I'm kind of, especially with how long your hair is on top, it really doesn't make it make sense to take your hairline back, you know, much further than what it is naturally. I'm really not taking it back at all, but just cleaning up the edges. I mean, technically, not technically, you know, people think of a lineup when they think of like an actual fade. This is really, I mean, I'm all about just kind of taking it all um, just enhancing what your natural hairline does and the shape of your head and all of that jazz. I'm gonna go ahead and trim the top. Well, generally speaking, we make sure that the back is shorter than the front. And this is disconnected. Um, you know, if it were connected, it would be, sh you know, short to there. I'd say it's probably close to four inches in the front. Kind of go in just in the same way that we did the haircut and thin it out a little bit. Anytime we cut length off of Mike's hair, we have to thin it out some. And then we'll dry it and we'll see, you know, what, if we need to thin it a little bit more. I kind of like to do that minimally until it's dry. The last thing that I want to do is shred your hair. I'm just kind of feeling to see the thickness. I actually don't think that it really needs to be thinned anywhere else. And you can kind of see what we did with the color. You know, it's still ruddy. You still have that overall like darkness at the root, but you have a lot more light pieces that are kind of in that area to help bridge that gap between the dark and the light. And time out, pause. Hi, Mike here again, obviously. Who else would it be? So sorry to interrupt here. Jenny was supposed to finish out this video, but we did have a, a slight malfunction in equipment. What ended up happening right here at the end was the, the battery in my recorder, the one that she's been using to talk to you guys this whole time through. Actually, it's the same recorder I'm using right here, this little Zoom H1 recorder. It, died the batteries died luckily it was right there at the end it was a large amount of time that we filmed this in i did condense it 
all down, you know, to, to make it a little easier to watch. But in real time, everything you just saw took about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer. And that was obviously way too long. But that length of time was nonstop with both the camera and the recorder. And hopefully, and luckily we didn't miss any important steps, but it did die right there at the end without me knowing it until I got back home and started going through all the footage. I realized I had footage, but no voice for the end, which was, you know, the finale. This is the, this is the big finish here. We're going to style it up, show you guys what we got. And I didn't have any Jenny voice there. So there always seems to be something, but that's really what happens when you're a one man operation. But we are not going to let this go to waste. I'm just going to finish up here for you guys. So here we are at the end. All that's left to do is style. And for styling, we're going to be going with some Silver Fox from By the Lane because you guys already know I love this stuff. We actually did have some sidekick there too. You can see it right there on the shelf. But we decided to just show the power and pliability that the Silver Fox can really provide on its own. It's really nice and slick, but still has a lot of that great hold. And as you can see here, it really just brings all the work we did on my hair to completion. Now, another reason why Jenny had the sidekick there was actually because she's been playing around with the entire line in the salon for the past couple weeks, too, with her other clients. And so we just had some stuff there from the line. And ultimately, we just chose to go with the Silver Fox for this one. But you guys know that I love the Bivalene lineup a lot. I love them very much. I've been using them forever. They're constantly a part of my personal rotation. And so I wanted to make sure you guys knew that if you wanted to try Silver Fox or Gold Digger, anything really that the Bivalane lineup offers or Slick Hair Shop, whatever, this channel offers one of the few discounts still available for SlickHairShop.com, Bivalane, everything they sell. That is actually linked in every video. So check that out if you're interested. I'll put it, of course, in this one. That'd be kind of weird to not include it in this one if you think about it. It, but check that out if you're interested. And once again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thanks for cutting me a break too on the production quality and the little mishap there at the end. I mean, I really uh, don't know what else I can do. It's, I am a one man show here. I don't have anyone to film for me at the moment. So when I'm getting my hair cut and I'm filming this for you guys, I'm, you know, with a gimbal and my either phone or a camera, you know, up here and she's cutting my hair and I'm just kind of going like this, you know, trying to make sure it's somewhat watchable. It's very tough, but you know, I'm doing the very best I can. So I, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I, of course, want to thank Jenny too, if you're watching, thank you for all the help here and for all the years of the amazing haircuts. I can't wait to see the other awesome things we do in the future in the salon. And if you guys have any more questions, throw them down in the comment section. I will try to get back to you if I you know can answer the question I'll do my best I always enjoy reading your guys's questions and things like that and of course make sure you tap that like button help me out in that regard and if you have not yet subscribed you need to do that you just need to do it at this point hit that button for me and lastly I want to thank you once again for stopping by the channel today and checking out this video I will of course be back with you guys again very soon and until then take it easy I'll see you next time